Earlier in the countdown, we observed body snatching ants in action. But now the tables are turned. This time, they're the victims. Red fire ants were accidentally released into America in the 1930s. And now there are literally billions of colonies across the southern states. Farmers load the pests, but have been unable to stem the tide of advancing ants. But now, there's one animal that stands in their way. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is rearing huge numbers of pinhead-sized body snatchers. Swarming in to number four in the countdown yeah. are four in flies. These adult flies are the fire ant's worst nightmare. They hover just out of reach, waiting for an opportunity to dart in and inject an egg into the ant's body. secretes enzymes which cause the ant's head to drop. Safe inside this gruesome chamber, the maggot pupates and emerges as an adult fly, ready to go hunting again. Luckily, these flies are like biological smart bombs, and they only attack red fire ants. However, there is a species of foreign fly that really digs humans. Digging down through the soil to reach human remains, the coffin fly lays its eggs in the dearly departed. And there was a time when it wasn't the only body snatcher lurking in graveyards. In 18th century Scotland, there were five medical schools in Edinburgh, and they all needed bodies for the young doctors of anatomy and surgery to practice their skills. Local entrepreneurs soon realized there was good money to be made digging up fresh bodies and selling them to medical schools. The authorities tried to stop the body snatchers by building watchtowers and reinforcing the tombs with so many bars and locks they began to look like bank vaults. But it takes a lot more than a few bits of steel to stop a foreign fly. Once the larvae are tucked inside the decapitated head of the ant, they can pupate in peace. When they emerge, they'll join the battle against one of America's most devastating invaders. This brain-eating body snatcher may be bad for the ant, but it's good for the southern United States. someone could be hiding the next contender in our countdown of extreme body snatchers. And they may not even know what's lurking inside their body. It's estimated that a quarter of the world's population is infected with some kind of parasitic worm. There are 5,000 species of tapeworms alone, but don't go thinking that these parasites just sit quietly in the gut, stealing food and minding their own business. Research has shown that to complete their life cycle, some parasites take over the body they've snatched. And it doesn't matter if the tapeworm is 60 feet long, or in the case of our next contender, measures less than a quarter of an inch. The 
hydatid tapeworm is one of the smallest in the world and lives inside the wolf. It doesn't cause much harm as it happily feeds in the gut. Every 14 days, the tapeworm releases the last segment of its body. Inside are about a thousand eggs that pass out with the feces. When the segment ruptures, the eggs are scattered by wind and water. Most will perish, unless they can take over the body of their next host. If a browsing moose swallows an egg, it's in big trouble. After hatching, a small hooked embryo burrows its way through the gut wall. It's picked up by the bloodstream and transported to the liver or lungs where it transforms into a cyst. If there's no bone in the way, the cyst continues to grow until it contains up to 15 quarts of fluid and millions of little tapeworms. The huge cyst causes terrible damage, tearing through the moose's bronchial tubes and blood vessels. The hydatid tapeworm is number three in the countdown because it may even release a scent in the breath of its victim possibly acting as a magnet for a hungry wolf. The weakened moose is in trouble, but that's good news for the parasite. The tapeworm can't complete its life cycle until it gets back to a wolf, so it turns its host into an easy target. When wolves sweep down on the herd of moose, they're more likely to target the sluggish, wheezing individual. The infected moose may even smell weak thanks to the parasite's odor. The end result is that the tapeworm gets back to where it wants to be, inside the body of a wolf. This horrible body snatcher just uses the moose as a vehicle to find its way back home. Our next contender uses similar tactics but with even more terrifying consequences.